Welcome to the final part of this tutorial series. Yes, this is the last one, I promise. So uh, last time we implemented model training and we saw how to collect a batch of experience samples and use those for updating our policy. Uh, we trained the actor and critique models using this. Now today we will just apply some finishing touches to the code and we'll also see how it all works together. Okay, now first thing we want to do is to loop through our code for multiple iterations. This means that in one iteration of the loop, we collect some number of experience samples using our current policy. And then we update our policy models based on what we just observed. And then we start over again the same process with the newly updated policy. And we collect another batch of samples. We need to keep doing this in a loop until we finally reach a model that is good enough to play the game. And at that point, we can save the model checkpoints. So now let's go ahead and uh, implement this in the code. Let's start with a while loop here. While not target reach. This is the boolean variable that tells us whether uh, we are happy or not with the performance of our current model. So let's set it to false at the beginning. Let's add another condition here saying that if we try for multiple iterations and we still fail to reach our target, let's just call it a day. Now all of this code will move inside the loop. So just select everything except env close and uh, hit tab let's just define the variables uh, iters equals to zero and uh, max iters that we want to go up to let's keep it to 50. Okay, we also need to move these initializations inside the loop. So a new batch is collected every time we start a new iteration. Okay, let's also add something I forgot to initialize previously. Let state underscore input be equals to none. Okay, now let's implement some model evaluation code. This will tell us at the end of model training in the current iteration, how good the last updated version of the model is. So to evaluate that, let's calculate uh, average reward. We'll define it as the average reward we obtained by playing the game from scratch for five times. So if we score a goal in three out of five games, our average reward will be 60% or 0.6 and similarly if we score all 5 out of 5 times we get a reward of 100% or 1 indicating that we can now stop the training process and save the final model checkpoints. So let's go ahead and define this test reward function up top. We'll start by resetting the state of the environment in order to start a new game. Let's set done equals to false. Uh, initialize our total reward for this game equals to zero. Let's print out testing so we know when this code is being executed. You may add like a fancy progress bar or something here, but I just want to keep this tutorial really simple and like mostly easy to understand. So I will leave out all that fancy stuff. Let's also set a limit on maximum number of steps we want to allow in order to score a goal. So if it takes forever to score, it's just considered as not scoring. While not done state input uh, equals to k dot expand state
uh, action probabilities is this given by model actor predict state and we also need a bunch of uh, dummy inputs here i'm sure there is a better and more elegant solution to this so if someone uh, can please let me know down below if you know a better way to handle the model inputs in keras so now we'll use the most probable action from our model's output probabilities and uh, use that to advance one step in the game environment let's update the state first for the next iteration now we can add the current reward uh, that we have obtained so far in the current game to our total reward variable and let's update the limit and make sure if we take too many steps without scoring a goal we just want to break out of the loop that's it we can now return the total reward from this particular interaction with the game so you can see this will run the game 5 times and see how many times our current model was able to score a goal now the only thing remaining is to save the model checkpoints when we manage to score let's say at least 90% of the total times let's actually print out how many times we managed to score if average reward is greater than best reward let's initialize this as well to 0 it tracks our current best reward remember we want our best reward to reach the level of our target reward let's print the best reward this is a typo here i notice later on so uh, it's better if you write best reward instead of average reward anyways this is the condition where our newly updated model has managed to perform better than our current best one so we should just go ahead and replace that model so let's do model underscore actor dot save and we'll give it the name model actor dot hdf5 and we can put in the iteration info and and the reward info in there as well okay now we can do the same for the critic model let's copy this and just change the name to critic and now we can update our best reward to be equal to the average reward from the current iteration last thing if our best reward crosses 90% or if we have uh, tried many times but are unable to reach that high of a success rate we can just call it quits and end the loop so let's set target underscore reached equals to true and we can increment the total iters here and also reset the environment at the end of this iteration okay if you made this thus far congratulations that should be all that's required to run this particular training code so let's just go ahead and do that All right, everything seems to be working perfectly now. We are first collecting a bunch of experiences by playing the game. Then we use these experiences to update our models. Then we evaluate the current models to see if they are as good as what we expect them to be. If not, we repeat the process again 
until we are happy with the model. And finally, if we reach our target of making the model score in uh, most of the tests, then we can save the model checkpoints and stop the training. So that's like an overview of the entire code we have implemented here and what's running. Now, as you can see, the code is running quite slow here. That's because my single GPU is unable to keep up with the task of running the game alongside like two full blown uh, con nets. Um, at this rate, it could take up to a week or maybe more to see any significant changes to the policy of our model. And chances are that if you are following this tutorial, uh, you might as well have a weak GPU like me. But don't worry, there is another way for you guys to still be able to run this in a reasonable time frame. So, just go to the GitHub page for this project. Uh, I have put the link in the description down below. There you can clone it and you can run the train.py script. The reason it will run much quicker than what we just implemented is because I have switched the input to our models from an image of the game to a much more concise input format. I'm using representation equals to simple 115, which is a 115 dimensional vector containing details like position of the ball, speed and direction of the ball, position of the players, etc. So this way we can use a much smaller model than the coordinates that we use and uh, you will be able to run this code even on a relatively weak GPU. Okay, so once you get that working and start the training process, this is what you will see. At first, the model will explore random actions and collect a bunch of rewards for these actions. Then it will try to adjust the model weight so that it can maximize the rewards that it obtains in the next iteration. Over time, the model's policy will undergo small incremental changes so that it performs slightly better than the last time. And after many iterations, it will finally hit the correct action for this particular game mode, which is shooting the ball to the right hand side and that will result in us hitting the target reward we have set before. So the model will be saved and we can later use this to play the game. Use the test.py script that you see here uh, in order to see how our saved model performs and you should be able to see something like this. All right, this should give you a good idea of the basic PPO algorithm you can now move on to building upon this by executing multiple environments in parallel as how it was detailed in the PPO paper in order to like collect more training samples uh, in a less amount of time. And you can also solve more complicated game scenarios like a full 11v11 mode or like scoring from corner kicks. Let me know in the comments down below if you feel like this tutorial was helpful to you. Uh, this one took me almost uh, 45 days or 50 days to complete and that's a lot of time. So let me know whether you'd like to see more of these in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.